Breaking news today on Seculo as Letitia James is filing to erase Trump in New York. Keeping you informed and engaged now more than ever. This is Seculo. We want to hear from you. Share and post your comments or call 1-800-684-3110. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. Monday deadline. It actually began at 12.01 a.m. Eastern time, uh, so early morning hours when uh, President Trump uh, did not deliver what was close to almost $500 million. I think it was $454 million just to Letitia James, but when you put all the full totals together, it was getting closer to $500 million. So she is in the process right now of identifying the buildings she wants to take over immediately, Logan. Yep. Uh, those buildings right now, uh, she has listed them. Is uh, first off is in Westchester County, a Trump Golf Resort and private estate that's called Seven Springs, and that she's taking the first step in seizing that asset in New York. Uh, she's also looked at the famous uh, Trump Forty Wall Street and Trump Tower next. Now that goes on to a second story, Logan, where uh, it Truth Social has it appears yes, been purchased. News. Big. Tell people about the true social move. Yeah, and, and Will can fill in sort of the gaps here. A lot has happened when we when we were about to go on air, which is that Truth has essentially announced that they will be going public in a way. Now, in the way they go public, it evaluates the company at somewhere around three billion dollars in essentially a sell. It's a very confusing kind of strategic move, but to really explain it, it's potentially millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, potentially even more. Uh, that could then go to President Trump. Right. So, I mean, there could be ways where this is very temporary. Uh, these seizures could be temporary, and he, then he can make good on the bond. Uh, we will see what happens. But as of right now, Letitia James, I think by the end of the day, unless something changes between our broadcast and the end of the day, will have seized some Trump properties. Yeah. And by the way, she doesn't just have to seize them in New York. Any Trump property anywhere in the United States. So that would include Florida, Mar-a-Lago, the golf courses there, the Northern Virginia, uh, Trump National, Trump National, Los Angeles. I mean, of course, the New York ones are closer and probably worth a lot more money. Uh, Doral in Miami. I mean, there's major properties. There's the Trump Hotel in, in Vegas. You can keep going on and on. Yeah. But but we know she's taking the first steps, Logan. Yeah, and I think uh, her quote was her saying, I forced Trump into bankruptcy, and that is exactly what it seems like uh the intention. Like it. I mean, he says he's got five hundred million dollars in the bank. He didn't want to spend that on this. He That's what she spend wants on the campaign. Oh right. yeah. So there was a, a statement that came out on Truth Social as well from President. We Trump. want to get your thoughts on this too. One eight hundred six eight four thirty one ten. Because this is the war on Trump. This is how it, like this is the heart of it. When they yeah. can start trying to take down people with millions of dollars of assets, hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank accounts, and try and bankrupt them off of a court case that hasn't even been appealed yet. Yeah, well, let's go through. This is what he posted on Truth. I'll be honest, it's not the easiest thing to read because it is all caps, uh, as he always does. Uh, you know, it, do it? It, it, sure, have fun. All You're a right, good reader. let me know when we get close to time. Through hard work, talent, and luck, I currently have almost $500 million in cash, a substantial amount of which I intended to use in my campaign for president. The often overturned uh, political hack judge on the rigged and corrupt AG case, that's Erdogan, uh, where I have done nothing wrong, do this, wanted to take it away from me. And that's where and why he came up with the shocking number, which coupled with his crazy interest demands is approximately $454 million. I did nothing wrong except win an election in 2016 that I wasn't expected uh, uh, to win, did even better in 2020, and now lead by a lot in 2024. This is communism in America. So he's saying he's got the cash, didn't want to use it this way, We've got a truth social sale, which could bring in $300 million. I don't know how quickly he would receive that when it goes public like that, how quickly he could use it. Yeah. But how fast could he get the bolts taken off the door, if you will? Yeah. 24 hours, 48 hours. But what we know is at some time today, I would think Letitia James is going to want to have a press conference. Uh, putting the uh, the seizure. They want to have the seizure of the building. Yep. Coming up next, we got Mike Pompeo also to discuss this and some other topics as well. We are wrapping up here. We are halfway through our life and liberty. We have a week left of our life and liberty drive, and we are just shy. We are 250 people away from our 500 bonus goal. Do it right now. Become ACLJ champion.
Donald Trump has until Monday to solve a $450 million problem. Letitia James is laying the groundwork to seize some of his assets. James has filed documents that could lead to the seizure of Trump's golf course and his estate in Westchester County. Properties that could be at risk for seizure, Seven Springs, Trump National Golf Club, Trump Tower, 40 Wall Street, and the Trump International Hotel. We haven't seen effort to enter the judgment in Florida, where, of course, Mar-a-Lago and the Doral Golf Club uh, are both located. Trump says the attorney general is trying to force him to sell his real estate at five fire sale prices. And if and when I win the appeal, they would be gone. Does he have the money to pay this? Uh, not my business. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court. And we will ask the judge to seize his assets. What's happening to the New York legal system uh, is, is truly alarming. This was one of the premier systems in the world. Seizing assets after 22 days? In a bankruptcy court, you get years to resolve this. This is not a good look on New York. It doesn't matter this Trump. It could be anybody. I think that's very bad for the American brand. Letitia James ran for office promising to get Trump. It's reprehensible that that's what our system has become. Mm -hmm. yeah. Part of it is a defect in the system. Law enforcement and judges should not be running for offices making for office making political promises. Folks that are doing business in New York need to be advised that the Attorney General of New York will weaponize the justice system and contrive facts and law in order to take them down if they don't uh, uh, ascribe to her ideological bent. State officials can't just padlock Trump Tower or this Trump building here on Wall Street, but Michael, they can take legal action like liens and foreclosures until they're satisfied Trump can pay the judgment that a judge has imposed on him. All right, welcome back uh, to Seculo. We are joined by a member of the Seculo team and the ACLJ, TR, Senior Counsel for Global Affairs, former Secretary of State and CIA Director, uh, Secretary Mike Pompeo. And Secretary Pompeo, I want to go right to, to you on this. President Trump has a Monday deadline. It's 12.01 a.m. I mean, when the clock strikes 12.01 from Sunday to 12.01 Monday, Letitia James could be out there and begin seizing assets. How do you think if there's an asset seizure, and there's talk about Trump getting this money together maybe at the last minute, but if it doesn't all get in there by 12.01, and she's out there you know, putting bolts on, uh, whether it's Trump Tower or she's, they, she's also named some other places, a Seven Springs Estate and Golf Resort in Westchester County, 40 uh, Trump Wall Street. Uh, is this the uh, – do you think this is how we're going to see this play out over the next few days? Because the American people – I mean, we really haven't seen anything like this in our modern American political system where, the the again, the law enforcement officials are going to take away at the district court level before an appeal is made – uh, these huge assets of such successful American business people because they happen to get into politics. Well, Jordan, you know, this, I, I hope it's not the case. Your question, I guess, was, is that what's going to happen? I hope it's not the case, yeah. which uh, I will tell you, she sure looks like that's the path that she is heading down. She will grandstand. Uh, but we should all take just a step back. I think it's important to remember how we got here. We, we saw political charges brought by a political actor, and now they're going to use the force and power, the armed might of the government to take away property from someone who is still litigating a, a valid claim. This is, to your point, this is unheard of. Uh, I think the reaction from the American people will be precisely what we would think it is, which is how outrageous for government to do this. Uh, we, we all knew, Jordan, you and I talked about this a while back. This is how this proceeds, right, in the end. Um, when you go pursue a political advocate, a political adversary, and then uh, go find a judge who will find for you, rule for you without a, a proper due, due, due process, right. this is how it happens. And this would be a tragic day for America to see armed government agents in the street seizing assets for a candidate for president of the United States of America. I mean, it seems like this, uh, Secretary Pompeo, and, and uh, almost the question at this point feels a bit rhetorical, but does it feel like with James now starting to seize these assets that we're reaching the point where we've hit that point of no return in terms of what future political you know, motivated prosecutions are in this country? You know, I, I, it feels that way. I, 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 I refuse to believe that America is going to devolve to what we see happen in other countries to political actors. 
but it is going to take a concerted effort. It's going to take a concerted effort from uh, political leaders, but most importantly from from the folks who are watching and listening to your show today to demand that this is not the model. Uh, it, it can't be the case that this is the, the the course of action that we see taken, not just this isn't just about this particular instance or about President Trump. This is about government power being used in a way that is deeply antithetical to our republic. And I, I pray that it's the case that this that the James is a uh, that this is aberrant, that this won't become the new normal in the United States. This it, it can't be the case. This is this is very dangerous stuff. I want to go overseas to Israel because this was very interesting. Uh, the United States put forward a ceasefire resolution. Uh which, again, you would think that the world powers would be in support of at the U.N. Uh, this involves, of course, Israel. And the United States ceasefire resolution was vetoed by Russia and China at the U.N. at the Security Council. So how outrageous is it that the countries working hand-in-hand -hand with Iran uh, get to call the shots like that? And even when a ceasefire is put forward that they've been begging for, I guess since it came from the U.S. and the Biden team, they shot it down. It is really something. Uh, first is something that the United States is demanding a ceasefire for, right? A asking the victim uh, to stop responding to the aggression that took place. So that's that's pretty ridiculous in the first instance that the United States put forward this uh, proposal. Uh, but then second, your point, which is uh, this is not terribly dissimilar to what the Russians and the Chinese and others have put forward before, and yet because it came from us, I think I think it's so telling. Jordan, I think it's the time that because it came from us, they've decided they're going to oppose it. They're going to seek more. This is what happens when the United States appeases. When you appease, when you begin to move in the direction of your adversaries, they're going to not just take an inch or a foot. They're going to take a mile. And I think that's what the Chinese and the Russians are trying to do by vetoing this U.S. resolution. All right. We do have a ton of calls coming in, Jordan. I think we should hold those probably for the next segment here. But I just want to say, if you're on hold right now, stay on hold. Yep. Uh, we are going to get to you, uh, and then give us a call at 1-800-684-3110. I know there's a lot of people who have been on hold for already some time. We're going to get to you. We obviously have Secretary Pompeo with us Yeah, right let now. me ask you this. If it would, if we know that Israel's goal is to destroy Hamas. They had some big victories. Uh, uh, they've seized, I think it was hundreds of terrorists, uh, top-level Hamas officials in the last couple of days who were hiding out in what their so-called hospitals, uh, and uh, they've been starting to put those forward and naming those high-level uh, Hamas officials. So they've had some great success there. I wonder if it will be despite the support from the United States, because it's like it's questionable support that ultimately Israel is able to win this against Hamas, but it but it won't be in a joint effort really with the United States. Pretty remarkable uh, yesterday to hear former Ambassador Dermer, who's now an advisor to Prime Minister Netanyahu, talk about the fact that, hey, we're prepared to go this alone. The Israelis should never even have to contemplate going this alone when the this is vindicating their own sovereignty. So, uh, yeah, it could be the case that the Israelis will have to do this without much American help and indeed in the face of American criticism. And I, I must say, too, I'm, I'm very worried about what's next. Uh, the, the Israelis will get it right in Gaza. They will, in the end, they will it, 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 it eviscerate the capacity of Hamas to threaten them. But we shouldn't forget, Jordan, there's still this problem in the north. Today you have 60 to 80,000 Israelis who can't move back to their homes. Hundreds of rockets have been fired out of Lebanon by Hezbollah. We don't talk about that as much because it's not in the news, but make no mistake about it. This, this conflict, the security of Israel still matters and has risk even after Hamas is gone, because in the end, the head of the snake is in Tehran. And the United States is the only nation that can support Israel in confronting the real challenge, which is to ensure that Tehran doesn't continue to inflict this kind of barbaric terror, you know, not think, only on Israel, but on the world. I think this follows up on a final question to you, Secretary Pompeo. It's great to have you as part of our team. But, you know, we know the relationship between Netanyahu and Biden is publicly in shambles. So, I mean, what happens next there? <laughs> you know, President Biden began his time in office uh, calling the uh, crown prince uh, in Saudi Arabia a pariah. And the Middle East policy has gone downhill since then. Uh, I, I hope that the two of them, uh, whatever their personal challenges are between each other, I hope the two of them will come to understand what's in America's best interest and Israel's best interest. And that is for a tight, connected at the hip relationship between the rightful Jewish homeland of Israel and the United States of America. President Biden needs to take that, to confront that, to get that right. I'm confident that Israeli leadership, including Prime Minister Netanyahu, are, in, are intent on doing that. All right, Secretary Pompeo, as always, we appreciate you joining us. And folks, 
we're able to have members like Secretary Pompeo have now been on our team for years uh, because of your financial support of the ACLJ and a lot of you because of your, AC, your ACLJ champions, you take part in these life and liberty moments, Logan. Yeah, absolutely. We are approaching just, I mean, a week left. Ends at the end of the month, in just a week, the end of our life and liberty drive. And we are just so overwhelmed and so thankful for what you all have done so far. And we can't continue these fights without your support. There are lots, there's a lot going on. We're preparing to file an amicus brief in the Fonnie Willis case, which you've heard about, disqualification appeal. We, the UN just released its opinion calling uh, for Shazad's immediate release. We'll talk about that coming up. Uh, we are working around the world. I'll just put it that way. We're working in the country and around the world to protect life and liberty. I want you to have your gifts doubled right now at ACLJ.org. If you're able, we also encourage you to become an ACLJ champion. And what that is, I'm sure you've heard it now. If you, you're a regular listener, regular subscriber, you heard it, but you know I'm going to say it again. It's, it's the most important thing. You can be an ACLJ champion and help us fight for life and liberty every month. You should become a recurring donor. And what that has done for us has been just tremendous. We have passed 20,000. We are on our way to our stretch goal, which is to hit another 500. We are halfway there. We are only 250 away from hitting that goal. we got a week to do it. So we encourage you to do that right now. Become a champion. Fight alongside the ACLJ each and every month. Go to ACLJ.org. Have your tax uh, deductible gifts doubled right now. Do you understand that? I just want to make sure it's clear. When you give $20... ACLJ champions have dedicated funds that then go to match those that money. And other people in, involved in the ACLJ, other donors have said, I will be part of that match. So if you're watching right now, I encourage you to either uh, scan the code, the QR code you see on your screen, or just go directly if you're listening to ACLJ.org or ACLJ.org slash life and liberty. All right, we've got just a quick break coming up here. we got a packed show coming up. we got Rick Grinnell joining us later on. And we're also going to talk about a lot of the breaking news, including what I mentioned before uh, in, with the UN. We'll talk more about Letitia James and that, what's happening there. We'll talk some on Israel. And also uh, some interesting news about the deep state as well. Because according, well, we'll tease this out for later. According to the New York Times, the deep state is actually, in quote, kind of awesome. We'll discuss that coming up. Also, if you're on hold, stay on hold. If not, we got three lines open right now. You can get on the air. 1 800 684 3110. 1 800 684 3110. Have your voice heard on the air. We'll be back, Jordan, in just a second. Yeah, that's right. Please become a champion and fight alongside us each and every month. Go to ACLJ.org. Have your tax dedu- deductible gift doubled right now. ACLJ.org. Do you really expect Letitia James to actually move forward with taking over Trump properties in New York? Absolutely, I do. Because that's the the model of Letitia James is to politically take down Donald Trump. And she feels like this image, I believe, of, you know, taking over the buildings, padlocking the doors, uh, you know, taking the Trump signs off and freezing his assets uh, will ultimately kind of take away the veneer that surrounds President Trump, right? That he is this ultimate businessman, not politician, that needs to be leading the country. And he asked for an additional 30 days, Rob, to put this money together. In most cases, with this large of amount of money, you would you would grant that. But of course, this judge here, it's so hostile. So under New York state law, she could theoretically take over, say, Trump Tower or 40 yeah. Wall Street and then start auctioning off those properties. Could it go that far? That's right. Now, it could go that far. So what President Trump, if he goes this route and starts allowing her to, to seize these assets, and they can go, by the way, out of state, so they can even seize Mar-a-Lago. I mean, I think she'll start in New York, where she said she's got her eyes on it, but this could go nationwide. And so what then happens is he will need to appeal immediately the judgment. Does this, to you, as an attorney with a lot of experience, fall under the excessive category of the Eighth Amendment? So if you were going to appeal this, you'd absolutely have an entire section in your appeal, in the brief that you prepare, on the Eighth Amendment and on this penalty. And you'd you'd do a lot of research on the penalty, too, as well, because of the fact that the loans were repaid. You know, I could tell you how much my house is worth, but but you're not going to take that at face value. You're going to negotiate based off what other experts believe. This is, again, that warning that New York, unlike other states, has this ability to go after you and say you've committed a crime when you have wronged 
do it. All right, folks, we're going to go right to the phones. 1-800-684-3110. Mike Pompeo joined us. Rick Rodell is going to be joining us in the second half hour of the broadcast. There's a lot to talk about. You've got a lot of phone calls, too, because Monday is going to be a very interesting day. Now, a lot of movement already happening today with True Social. Uh, will President Trump somehow kind of put together this money at the last moment where Letitia James isn't going to be able to start locking up uh, some of the uh, you know the Trump buildings that she wants to start with in New York? Now, we, we, we will not know really until 12.01, so midnight plus one minute on Monday morning when this can begin. All right, let's go ahead and take some phone calls. Chuck's calling in Iowa on line four, watching on YouTube. Thank you to everyone who watches on YouTube. We ask you if you're new to hit that subscribe button. We do this show each and every day and tons of other great content. Chuck, you're on the air. Yes, sir. I had a question. If uh, she seizes his property and say she sells it, does she have to sell it at market value or less? And then if he wins his appeal and they already sold his property, does he get that money back? And also, why don't they take it to the Supreme Court since it's in violation of the Eighth Amendment? Okay, so I think, let me just answer one. Market value, yes, he could get, if he wins, he would get the the money back. Uh, I don't know, the building would have already been sold, but the money back. And in the meantime, could you appeal this? He is going to. uh, And he will appeal, I think he will use the Eighth Amendment as well as possibly even like interstate commerce because this New York law is so different than other states think. There's no injured party here, except New York didn't like what you gave to the loan company, who, by the way, would never, ever, I've said this how many times on the show, just take your piece of paper and say, I'm worth this, give me $500 million. They don't do that. They take yours, then they do their own assessment. And if it is pretty close, they say, okay, what they said was pretty close to what we believe, so here's the loan. If they think it's too far apart, they say, now we disagree with you on your assessment of what your property is worth. Not necessarily a crime, but it means... Uh, we're not going to give you a loan. In New York, even if you get the loan, they can look at it and you pay it back. That initial document you gave over, if they believe you were uh, lying, even if you got the loan and paid the loan back, which means you weren't really lying because you you got the money that you said you were going to get and make off of it, right. uh, that you've somehow harmed New York. So could, it get, could this get to the U.S. Supreme Court? It would have to work its way all the way up through the, U, the New York court system. So it's do it would be doing that now, and then ultimately you can always appeal directly from the top court of a state to the U.S. Supreme Court when a constitutional issue comes up, like the Eighth Amendment or interstate commerce, uh, cruel and unusual punishments, which financial penalties are included in that, and economic crimes. So uh, penalties. So yes, I think you could see that uh, all three. The one thing you don't get is the buildings back necessarily. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have that question. There's that sort of looming sense of when all the banks said, well. We would happily do business, and this has nothing to do with like that, that has just tainted this entire process so dramatically. Let's go ahead and take another call. Let's go to Robert, who's calling. Similar comment in Louisiana on line three, also watching on YouTube, which we appreciate. Robert, you're on the air. I forgot exactly forgot my question. <laughs> um, does it, do you have it written down? Yeah, yeah, I'll ask your question for you, Robert, which was. Can Letitia James take property that is held in a partnership or anything like that? Because people, I guess, are a little confused on, well, what's a Trump asset? Is a Trump asset a company or a Trump asset President Trump individually? What are the rules? And I feel like it's a bit of a gray area. Those who would become a lead on the property, and they would sell his interest in it. Okay. So if he had like a third of a building. They have to sell it. Uh, they would. They would sell at market value. New York would want to sell. They'd put a lien on it, and then that would sell at market value. So it would not affect the other uh, participants, and it has to be at market value again. Now, uh, again, New York property right now is lower than it's been in a long time. Um, so this property in New York goes up and down, I mean, in waves of, of just – and there's still, you know, some of the most expensive properties in the world there. But, um, again, there's lots of different ways she could go about this. And I think when people are saying, well, does that save the building? It, it doesn't save it for Donald Trump. Yeah, and hopefully that's what you're that answers the question uh, for you right there. I think some of it was just, is this fair yeah. even to the other people who have been in, in business deals with him? We do have an update, too, out of the United Nations. Logan, our work for uh, persecuted Christians. I, I know that uh, people know about uh, Shazad Maziz, the Christian who has been on death row 
for blasphemy in uh, Pakistan. And we, of course, have been working with the UN. We're a through the ECLJ where I was last week in Stras and uh, in uh, Strasbourg, France, uh, working with our team there, uh, who is an NGO at the United Nations and and very active at the Human Rights Council, but also uh, very active with the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, which we have been with these. Uh, Christians who have been detained uh, and been facing uh, long-term sentences or even the death penalty around the world. And Shazad uh, Basi's case has been taken up by the U.N. Working Group, and they've now issued, I'm holding in my hands right now, a disposition. This is from the U.N. It's why you don't ignore the U.N. It's why you engage. It's tough. It's hard. It's not a place that's real uh, uh, loving of the work that we do. But once you're inside, you can get work done that is positive if you work really hard, which our teams do. So uh, what did the, the, the working group uh, find? They said that the deprivation of liberty of Shazad Masid uh, being in contravention uh, of Articles 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Articles 2, 9, 14, 19, and 26 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights is arbitrary and falls within Category 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. What does that mean? The working group considers that taking into account all the circumstances of the case, the appropriate remedy would be for Pakistan to release uh, release Mr. Massey immediately and accord him an enforceable right to compensation and other reparations in accordance with international law. And then in accordance with paragraph 33 of its methods of work, the working group refers the present case to the special rapporteur on the promotion and protection of of the right to freedom of opinion and expression, the Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief, the Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions, and the Special Rapporteur on the Independence of Judges and Lawyers for Appropriate Action. The Working Group requests the government of Pakistan to disseminate the present opinion through all available means as widely as possible. So we have now got the UN fully engaged to get Basid released. I think people need to understand this, and we can slow it down just a little for yeah. them, is though the UN can be polarizing, Very. this is a good thing. Yes. This is a very good thing. This is the UN using all of its power through one of its entities, which is the uh, UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, which has hundreds of millions of dollars in resources and all those special rapporteurs. They want them all working together, all those special rapporteurs I named, to see to make sure this one individual in Pakistan who's facing death is not only released, but receives both compensation and reparations. Yep. And he also will need extreme security. Uh, you know what's toughest here, folks? It's not uh, necessarily getting to this at the UN ultimately. It's not even necessarily the release. It's getting the judges to show up and do the right thing because the judges are scared because there's a history of, of them losing their life if they release individuals who happen to be Christians and charged with these bogus crimes. We only got about 50 seconds left. Two things really quick. If you just are joining us on social media, 50 seconds this segment, we have another half hour coming up. And we are going to, if people are, a lot of people are just joining us right now and they see the comments uh, about Letitia James, we'll reframe that coming up in the next segment so you have an idea of what's breaking news with that as she starts to seize properties. We'll discuss that coming up. But we are in the final week of our Life and Liberty Drive. We need your support right now. I'm going to ask you right now. We are 250 away from hitting, hitting our stretch goal, which is amazing. It's incredible. Uh, our stretch goal of new champions, those people that support the ACLJ each and every month, become an ACLJ champion by making a recurring monthly gift. You help us fight every single day in the fight for life and liberty we can't do that without you second half hour coming up stay tuned don't go anywhere got a lot of great content back in one minute the aclj fights the battles that matter most to our members we listen to you and we're taking action through the aclj life and liberty drive Every dime we receive goes to defend life and liberty from Capitol Hill to Geneva to the United Nations. Now is the time to fight. The rights to life and liberty are the cornerstones of our constitutional republic, but they are under attack. That is why we're proud to announce the return of the ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive. This month, we're redoubling our efforts to beat back the radical left's attacks on your constitutional freedoms and to defend the sanctity of human life, not just here at home, but around the world. Every gift you give will be doubled dollar for dollar, doubling your impact for life and liberty. 
Go to ACLJ.org right now and help us. Keeping you informed and engaged. Now more than ever. This is Seculo. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. All right, welcome back to Seculo. We are taking your calls. A lot of you have asked about hey, what's going on with Letitia James, Truth Social, $300 million sale. Logan, I want you to walk through people real quickly with that because everybody this weekend is going to be looking at 12.01 a.m. And 12.01 a.m. Monday. So just, you know, right after midnight, when the days cross over, is when Letitia James could begin to seize assets of President Trump and the Trump Organization it looks like where she's filed initially is all in New York. She has not filed in other states yet. She can. She could file in Chicago, by the way, to take the, the, the building there. She could file in Nevada for Trump Vegas. She could file in Florida to go after Mar-a-Lago. But right, and maybe she will today. But so far, it's all been in New York. And that would put in places like, of course, Trump Tower, uh, 40 Trump Wall Street. Yeah. And uh, there was one other uh, place she was looking at that was in Westchester County, which is a kind of like a country, a golf resort, private estate, Seven Springs, which is outside New York City, uh, to seize those properties. But President Trump has kind of pushed back on two different fronts. One, with a truth social uh, a message about how much money he's got available right. in cash. And second, about a truth social potential sale that may put more cash in his pocket. Yeah, for, for kind of a brief understanding, this is coming from truth social, technically truth media, or Trump Media, I guess it's Truth Media. Trump Media would be merging with a company that would allow it to go public. And with that, his stake, which he could then go and sell, or sell a percentage of, moves his net worth up to over, I think, just his stake alone. This is from the New York Times. So this is coming from the New York Times. I'll read you this. Former President Trump's social media company on Friday completed a long-awaited merger with a cash-rich company raising Mr. Trump's wealth by billions with a b and potentially providing him a fresh source of cash to his you know mounting legal bills that is from just that that will be more than 300 million into trump media and actually but his stake his personal stake in the company will be worth over three billion dollars on paper so that alone could you know change everything if it can be done fast enough but that should tell you something here when you're talking about the business structure of this guy is the fact that all of a sudden his his worth, not even his net worth, his paper worth, will go up by $3 billion with, with this deal. Yeah, I mean, this is, again, they really don't understand the different ways because he owns, he's not all online, he's not all tech. These are actually, you know, fundamental buildings. Uh, then you've got these companies that you can put up, then, then they go stock market. So I don't think this is over, Logan, until... Because now the money, it could be the money is, he gives the money that he has, he says he has cash in hand, according to that Truth Social post, and then guess what? He can replenish that money immediately by selling a certain amount of stock in or Truth. Or a little bit of both. You can do 50-50. Yeah, you know, it it's, it's becomes a lot different of a story immediately. And I think that, sure, does this feel like big business stuff that that billionaires deal with? Yeah, it, it frankly is, this is how it works. And whether you like it or not, this is kind of how I mean, it works. Th- this is not how it's supposed to work. No, but I'm saying is it feels like a lot world. of billionaires figure out ways to maintain being billionaires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, yeah. under extreme scrutiny. Because you had people involved, you had business people involved also who know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing and they know what their assets are worth. And their assets are still worth more than what she's claiming. Remember, this is a judge who said that Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million. Yep. Eighteen that billion dollars, five hundred thousand. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, it's just insane. Mar a Lago. When I was on Newsmax, the, the co-host, uh, I mean, Rob Finnerty said to me, he's like, you know, you and I, if we loan dog out every loan we could, I think we get. If Mar a Lago was really for sale for eighteen million dollars, they'd give it to almost anybody because it's really it'd be net value of like uh, two hundred million. Yeah. I mean, it's just insanity in New York. I think he has a good chance on appeal. That doesn't mean he'll necessarily get all these buildings back, but he will get money back. And sometimes that's better than yeah, the building. If that's the deal, just for the stake alone, he can have 166 mar a <laughs> So yeah, if, sure. if it was $18 million. So that's where we're at right now. Hey, we have uh, so many calls. We're going to take you guys uh, some of the next segment, but a lot in the last segment, so stay on hold. Uh, we got Rick Riddell joining us next. Uh, we are in that final week. One week left. Next week will be it. We're starting the final week today of our Life and Liberty Drive. You've heard me say it. I'm also going to ask you right now, not only go to aclj.org, become a, a champion. If you're new to this broadcast, if you're new on YouTube, or you're new on 
Rumble, or wherever you're watching this, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. It really, really helps. Donald Trump has until Monday to solve a $450 million problem. Letitia James is laying the groundwork to seize some of his assets. James has filed documents that could lead to the seizure of Trump's golf course and his estate in Westchester County. Properties that could be at risk for seizure, Seven Springs, Trump National Golf Club, Trump Tower, 40 Wall Street, and the Trump International Hotel. We haven't seen effort to enter the judgment in Florida, where, of course, Mar-a-Lago and the Doral Golf Club uh, are both located. Trump says the attorney general is trying to force him to sell his real estate at fire sale prices. And if and when I win the appeal, they would be gone. Does he have the money to pay this? Uh, not my business. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court. And we will ask the judge to seize his assets. What's happening to the New York legal system uh, is is truly alarming. This was one of the premier systems in the world. Seizing assets after 22 days? In a bankruptcy court, you get years to resolve this. This is not a good look on New York. It doesn't matter this Trump. It could be anybody. I think that's very bad for the American brand. Letitia James ran for office promising to get Trump. It's reprehensible that that's what our system has become. Mm -hmm. yeah. Part of it is a defect in the system. Law enforcement and judges should not be running for offices making for office making political promises. Folks that are doing business in New York need to be advised that the Attorney General of New York will weaponize the justice system and contrive facts and law in order to take them down if they don't uh, uh, ascribe to her ideological bent. State officials can't just padlock Trump Tower or this Trump building here on Wall Street, but Michael, they can take legal action like liens and foreclosures until they're satisfied Trump can pay the judgment that a judge has imposed on him. All right, welcome back uh, to Secchio. We are joined by our, our, our senior advisor for foreign policy, national security, the former acting director of national intelligence and ambassador to Germany, uh, Rick Grinnell. Rick, I want to go to uh, Gaza and Israel first, uh, because I want to ask you about it. So the U.S. puts forward a ceasefire resolution, and, you know, it's it's been pushed on the U.S. to put forward this resolution at the Security Council, and even when they put forward a ceasefire resolution, it's not good enough. It gets vetoed by China and Russia because it doesn't go, I guess, far enough for them. So even when they go anti-Israel at the Security Council, they don't go anti-Israel enough for China and Russia. Yeah, look, I spent, as you know, eight years inside the UN Security Council watching the multilateral negotiation process, and it's tough. It is very tough to get five veto members of the Security Council to agree on anything, let alone the 15 members of the Security Council. It's even tougher. And then you move to the General Assembly where there's 193 members, and it's even tougher. So what happens at the UN is it, it becomes the lowest common denominator of what everybody agrees. Usually the, the resolutions are toothless without any mechanism for enforcement and it, it's becoming uh, really almost useless other than a PR exercise. Um, I'm not sure that bringing this to the UN Security Council is the right decision anyway. We've got a lot of power that we can use and I think that the United States of America, the White House, and the State Department need to be pressuring the Qataris and the Israelis to get the hostages returned, especially the American hostages. That should be our sole focus. No talk about rebuilding Gaza, no talk about uh, ceasefires until we get the hostages returned. This is crazy. Yo, know, Rick, I also wanted to ask you about uh, something you tweeted. And I think, can we show this while we're talking to Rick? Over 100 migrants breaking through razor wire at our southern border, knocking down the border guards as they illegally cross the El Paso border in a wild scene as we await whether the Fifth Circuit will allow Texas uh, to uh, try and protect its own borders or go along with an old Supreme Court precedent, which says that the federal government has to deputize those state officials or they can't actually protect their own borders. Uh, SB 1070, it came out of the Supreme Court in 2006, I believe. Uh, and you see this violence where... Again, hundreds of migrants, you said people have got to see it. I mean, they just overrun. They overrun our border agents. Right there, Rick. 
Look, I hope that everybody sees this. I hope everybody realizes that the current border policy is a disaster. This is Joe Biden's border policy. Uh, he's off trying to blame Republicans for not getting more money and more uh, legislation. He just needs to stop this. Of course, the White House can act. Every time Joe Biden goes on television and says, I need Congress to do something, every single person at the border says, you do something. Stop blaming other people. You have the power. Stop pretending like you don't and use the power to close the border. But the reality is, Jordan, he doesn't want to. His base is so far left. They want an open border. And I'll, I'll remind people that an open border in Germany is the exact reason why the EU became less powerful. The UK said, we're out of here. And Brexit happened and the EU became smaller. You know, I mean, this is all these issues. Uh, and Rick, I, I think I, well, I got you. I got to ask you about uh, Letitia James and President Trump. I mean, we've got news stories today about President Trump's talking about he's got about $500 billion in cash. He didn't want to use it on this and would rather have used it towards the campaign. But he's still you know, thinking about using some of it on uh, uh, this this fine while he appeals it before they start seizing assets. We know that they can start seizing assets at 12.01 a.m. So, on uh, again, very early Monday morning. Uh, she can start seizing those assets if it hasn't been paid. You can still appeal and say that this was excessive, but if in the meantime they were to sell one of those assets, the best you could do is actually get the fair market value money back uh, from the state of New York if you ultimately win the case. You don't get the asset back if it's it's sold in that amount of time. Uh, there's also talk about truth social sales. I mean, uh, to me, listen, I think her seizing a couple of these plays right into the hands of Donald Trump. Uh, I, I do. I do think that they, you know they want to think. Oh, he can't pay five hundred. He doesn't have five hundred million. He's he's not really a billionaire. I mean, everybody that knows any billionaires knows they don't keep that kind of cash around. They keep their money invested. They keep it moving, growing, and, and expanding. But um, uh, so they're kind of, I guess, trying to make him look like he's he's not the person he says to be. But I could see this totally backfiring if they go nuts on him. It's already backfired. Let me just tell you, I'm not worried about the situation one bit. People are responding by giving Donald Trump money and support. They are leaving New York. Listen, uh, breaking news right now. If you are a Republican doing business in New York, you better get out because they're coming after you. You think Donald Trump is the only person they're coming for? Are you kidding me? They are going to go after every single conservative and Republican. New York has hung a sign. It says Democrats only in the business community. And this is a this is a slippery slope. I hope no red state follows through and begins to do the same thing that Democrats are doing in blue states. That is a disaster. And what we need right now are for rational independents, non-political people, and conservative Democrats to speak up and say, this is nuts. This has to stop. This is going to ruin our country. One last thing before we uh, move on to some phone calls as well. We got a good opinion out of the working group on arbitrary detention in the U.N. And I think, you know, we, we have a lot of conversations around here about the U.N. and why there's there's some bad in the U.N. that the General Assembly can become a pretty much a cesspool and useless. But it is also for our audience, Rick, as someone who has has worked there and been there, it is important for us to be there because there are moments there are glimmers of hope that happen, but it is incredibly important to be there. Well, it's so important to be there just to play defense. Uh, there are moments to play offense, but if we don't play defense, it could get really bad. ACLJ is there. I've worked with ACLJ when I was inside the UN and watched their work. And thank God that not only do we have a group of people in New York, but they're also in Europe where a lot of this action is, is taking place. I know Jordan was just there. And so we really need to have a team on the ground to stop this global order, this movement at the UN to really take over every country with international type laws. I mean, I wanted to talk to you about uh, some of the work we've done at the UN, Rick, and uh, again, why it's important for the those supporters out there to donate to the ACLJ because it's hard work that we do. But we've got the UN uh, a working group on arbitrary detention, and we've got them now, and all of their special rapporteurs within that group on unlawful detention, minority issues, religious freedom or belief, extrajudicial and arbitrary executions, uh, uh, calling for Pakistan 
to re- immediately release our client, uh, Mr. Bassi, who was in prison and on death row, uh, uh, as because it violates the Universal Declaration, uh, Declaration of Human Rights. But also, they are calling for him to get uh, the right compensation and reparations. So you can get uh, good actions, even on behalf of Christians in majority Muslim countries, in these UN working groups. If you fight hard, this this could lead to Pakistan having to get the judges in, hold the trial. When we actually get a trial, Rick, we win, and the judges need to be kept safe. The seed needs to be kept safe as well. But ultimately, uh, they get they get out of prison and off death row. Look, one of the reasons I love being a part of ACLJ is we have lawyers who are experts on this international process, whether it's ha- taking place at a UN or a UN agency. Uh, we understand the process. And a lot of times that's filing the, the right uh, appeals, doing the right legal work, working through the right committee. It's not just going to... Uh, the media and screaming. It's actually getting into the bowels of the international system and making sure that we play against them. And that's what I love about our team is that we are experts. We know exactly what to do. And certainly my eight years of experience at the UN uh, and working inside the Security Council is a part of this team, and I'm really proud of it. Thank you, Rick. Yes, thank you, Rick, for joining us today and each and every week. Really appreciate it. Uh, as we wrap up this segment, two things. Number one, uh, we're going to take a lot of phone calls. Some of you have been to hold for yeah. close to a half an hour. Phone call segment. Yeah, I appreciate all of you have been to hold. Some of you 25-plus minutes. Stay on hold. We will get to you. Uh, we have a couple lines open at 1-800-684-3110. Even if it's busy, keep trying. Here's the deal. One week left. Life and Liberty Drive. I don't have to tell you again, but I'm going to. We are halfway to our goal, our stretch goal. Because if you, our goal was to hit 20,000 new, or 20,000 total ACLJ champions, that's monthly supporters. We were able to surpass that goal. And now we have a stretch goal. And we are halfway to the stretch goal. And we cannot believe the outpouring of, of love coming from all of you. And we appreciate it, if you haven't done it yet, to go to aclj.org and become a champion. If you do that, your tax deductible gifts are doubled because we have people right now on the front lines who are willing to say, I will match the donations given for this month. We are wrapping up the month. And look, Easter's coming next week. We know a lot of you are going to be distracted. A lot of you are going to have holidays. A lot of you have days off work, days off school. So do it today if you can. Go to ACLJ.org. Become an ACLJ champion. Have your tax deductible gifts doubled and become an ACLJ champion. Taking calls, one 800 684 3110. Thanks to all of you who are watching right now. If you are one of the thousands of people who are currently watching on one of the subscribable platforms like YouTube or Rumble, I'm going to ask you to do that and hit the thumbs up. We're back in just a minute. Former President Trump now allowed to appeal the Fonnie Willis disqualification right. ruling. A lot of people shocked that she was even given the option to stay on this trial. Yep. Do you anticipate seeing a different result in the appeal? They're going to look at exactly uh, what we said, which is how did a judge uh, at, the, at the trial court level decide that there was that appearance of impropriety at a criminal case, which is enough absolutely to kick uh, one of the attorneys off that she brought in, the special counsel that was paid $700,000, but not the DA herself. It doesn't make any sense doesn't even make sense legally. I mean, it shouldn't make sense to anyone out there. If it was that bad that it gave the imp- appearance of impropriety, it should have uh, uh, included all of the attorneys working with the DA and the DA herself. So it's a great appeal to take to the Court of Appeals because you've got good language from this young trial court judge who was trying to, like, thread a needle. And I think the Court of Appeals and Georgia's Supreme Court, they're not as concerned about the politics. Your reaction to what we're seeing today on Capitol Hill, again, Democrats saying, "Okay, where's the evidence? Does this count? This is round two to see if the Republicans in this inquiry can get enough information, find enough information to justify moving from an impeachment inquiry into an actual impeachment to come up with counts 
for impeachment. And what you've got to dig down here is really try to figure out, was uh, uh, is it true that Joe Biden was not just kind of sitting on the periphery benefiting from this, but was actively involved, as some of these witnesses have said, and they need as much evidence as possible there to show his active involvement in trying to receive these funds from these uh, Chinese Communist Party owned companies. If they can get that, I think they can start moving forward. And that's going to be the key uh, information they need to get from the records and these witnesses. Thank you, those on hold. We will be taking your calls coming up here. We did want to quickly jump into this topic because it's just something that uh, uh, spoke to us a little bit. There was a breaking news uh, article that came out from the New York Times. I'm pulling up the headline right now, and it was something to the effect of the deep state, you know, something that we talk about quite a bit. A lot of people know what we're talking about when we're talking about it. The deep state is actually kind of awesome. And they put together a documentary, a six-minute documentary. We've cut it down so you can see some highlights from this. Tell me if this is the deep state you're thinking of when you hear the term deep state. I will totally obliterate the deep state. I will fire. Donald Trump is obsessed with the deep state. The deep state, deep state, the deep state is destroying our nation. Either the deep state destroys America or we destroy the deep state. And many Republicans are widening his paranoia. These unelected bureaucrats ruining this country. From a cabal of security agents to... The sick political class that hates our country. If elected, Trump's vowed to gut the federal government. Reinstate the Schedule F executive order and, quote, fire rogue bureaucrats. But who are these bureaucrats and what makes them so dangerous? Meet Scott Bellamy. I am a mission manager in the Planetary Missions Program Office. He drives a Nissan Titan 4x4. He's loved Star Trek since he was a kid. Of course I have a favorite character. It's either Captain Kirk or Mr. Spock. And he may have quite literally saved the planet from annihilation. Potentially. Next, we travel deep into the swamp itself, Washington, D.C. This is Radhika Fox. I am the Assistant Administrator for Water at the Environmental Protection Agency. She loves Pilates, making salads, and watching the Taylor Swift Eras Tour on TV with her family. Uh, I think we're all pretty 1989. Oh, and she led an operation to make our drinking water lead-free in 10 years. That's the dream. You want to replace your own water pipes? You got the skills to launch an asteroid-deflecting spacecraft? No. That's why your tax dollars pay experts like Radhika and Scott. Important work like this is happening all over America. Meet Nancy Alcantara. I am the acting director of enforcement for the wage and hour division for the Midwest uh, Regional Office for the U.S. Department of Labor. I had to take a breath, yes. She still eats Lucky Charms for breakfast, trains for marathons, and loves Latin dancing. These guys work for you but Trump wants them working for him. Sometimes it's really hard to to read the newspaper where, you know, you feel like we as public servants are being attacked. This doesn't mean that Americans can't have different ideas about how big the federal government should be. After all, there's no shortage of examples of real government overreach and overspend. But Trump's teaching us to expect the worst from people in government, when the truth is, they're actually some of our best. Yes, that is what we all consider the deep state. We're talking about the Taylor Swift loving person who's trying to fix the water supply or the NASA person who is sending a a, uh, rocket to deflect an asteroid. That is what we're talking about here. Yep. I don't believe... I don't believe anyone who's ever heard the term deep state thinks we're talking about all government employees that you don't know the name of. No. And that is what they infer We're talking about intelligence people and law enforcement officials who, who act... Uh, without the authority of the executive branch, they are acting on their own. They believe they can act with impunity because they are protected by the bureaucracy. We have 18 active lawsuits against these deep state actors. The real deep state. At the, yeah, the real deep state, like Not the actors Taylor at the woman. Department of Homeland Security, CBP and ICE, at the State Department, at DHS, at DOD, and uh, at SITCOM, at OD&I, where, where Rick used to be, on Afghanistan, I mean, at the IRS, uh, the State Department, again, over and over, 18 of these, Logan, these FBI ones, I mean, you can list through those, the Department of State, these are the bureaucrats who believe, even when the political actors come in, and you elect the politicians, that they are actually in charge, and they operate 
outside of the orders given by the president of the United States, especially when it's a Republican president. Here's what I will say. I believe everyone who is listening to this likely already knows that, yeah. understands that. Sure. It's these moving words around in terms to mean something they're not. No one rationally mean- thinks that when Donald Trump says, I'm going to gut the deep state, that means I would like there to be lead in the water and I'd like an asteroid that could kill humanity to hit the earth because I don't want government employees. That is insane. Uh, a well-done documentary piece, I will say, to that team. Visually beautiful. Sounded great. Great story. I like the Lucky Charms. I like the Taylor Swift. It all felt very real and personal. And you know what? Those three people may be pretty good people because it looks like they're doing work that is commendable. And there are There is good work happening in the government. You, you better have hoped there is. If not, you are funding legitimately millions of people, all of which are doing horrible things. No, we're talking about people who are politically motivated uh, in their decision-making that really affects the American people in a way that can be negative and polarizing. No one thinks, great, we should have lead in the water. Now, you may find out that that building costs 20 times than it should have cost, or something like that. There may have been government overreach that and that happens, or you know, you got to pick make it with the perfect materials or something like that. But that doesn't mean anything, and I think we're just talking if we think that's true. Let's go ahead and take some phone calls. we sure. got to get these quickly. I am so sorry you've all waited on hold for so long. Richard, New Mexico, line six, you're on the air. Not your- hey, Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking my call and all that you do for America with all your endeavors. So if I was Trump, I would call my good buddy, Elon Musk, and ask him to buy True Social. Well, there's a movement Truth Social we've talked about before. I don't know if it involves Elon Musk at all, but there is a move at Truth Social, Logan, and we've explained that today. I want to get some more calls. But, Brenda, that is a move that President Trump is making to take it public, which could include how much money to him? $3 billion. Three billion personally, personal. So, so you could easily write that five four hundred fifty. Easily billion just cash out a little bit, a third of it, and pay times two. So you know, yeah. pay it and replenish it. Back to phones we go. Let's go to Alice in Georgia on line five. Hey, Alice. Hi there. The Hi there. Hi. Um, I just wanted to thank you, number one, for all that you do. I try to listen to you every chance I get. Um, this thing that's happening with President Trump. The government is also looking at Apple right now, and if it can happen to these huge companies, it can happen to anybody. Yeah, I think that is, Alice, the, the general thought process. That's hopefully what our listeners understand, which is if it can happen to a president of the United States, that, doesn't, that means no, it can happen to anyone. Happen to Let's quickly try to get to Patty in Florida, who's also been on Final hold. Call the day. Patty, you're up. Hi. Um, my question is, since... Um, they said, I mean, the whole reason that they said uh, Trump committed fraud was saying that Mar-a-Lago was worth more than it is. Can he appeal say, uh, because one person said that it was worth $18 million? Can you appeal? The, the- All of this, Patty. The question is, is he going to appeal it while seizures are taking place, which he, he could have done? He could, can do if he could post this bond, and then if he wins, he would get the bond back, or he could appeal it after having to pay this bond or having the building seized. But, yes, he could appeal that plus the the uh, fine. So you could appeal both the findings of how much the properties were worth and you could appeal the excessive fine, and that will both be done. The question will be is, are buildings going to be seized or will he get uh, enough money together to get a bond out <laughs> from a bond company or multiple bond companies, actually? That's right. Hey, we are in the final week of our Life and Liberty Drive. Yeah, First, I want to folks. thank all of you who are watching right now and all of you who are listening around the world. We really appreciate it. Know that. I mean that. But we have 30 seconds left, and I'm going to tell you in that 30 seconds, it is time to support our work. Go to ACLJ.org. We are 250 people away. That's it from our stretch goal. We can't believe that, but it's true. we got a week to hit it. Become an ACLJ champion right now. All you have to do is go to ACLJ.org slash champions or ACLJ.org slash life and liberty. Whatever you want to do, go to ACLJ.org. Click that button to become a champion. Or if you can't, if you need to make an individual donation, of course, we appreciate that equally as much, and we really do appreciate it. But for those champions, do it right now. ACLJ.org slash Life and Liberty, or scan the code on your screen. Talk to you on Monday.